Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Playbook. Once again, it is Paul. This week, I am joined by uh, one of my favorite agents, just in general, all around great guy, a diamond in the rough, if you will. My friend and uh, your favorite, Brett Watkins. How are you, Brett? I'm good. I'm good. I appreciate that. Thank you. (laughs) Brett and I have actually done a a separate video together for uh, an interview series that we do at the brokerage um, just for recruiting purposes. And uh, Brett, Brett has been less than happy with me because I had some technical errors with that. And um, we were trying to get his face out to the masses. So I'm glad that we were able to do this today. Brett, thanks for sitting down with me, sir. No, not a problem. <laughs> All good. So um, to start off, Brett, for the people out there that don't know you like I do, aren't familiar with your background, why don't you tell us a little bit about your career in real estate, how you got your start, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, let's see. This is year six. And actually year seven. Uh, full time that we'll be going into. Um, you know, I I actually decided to get into real estate because I was irritated with the process when I went to buy my first home. Um, I you know I didn't have at the time I didn't have much money, but I qualified. You know, my credit was okay, and and I you know had money for down payment and closing costs and all that and. But, you know, I was looking at very inexpensive houses and I couldn't get an agent that was willing to really help me at the time. Uh, It was very, very difficult. So I was irritated with the whole process and uh, it kind of spurred me on to become an agent actually. And uh, so out of that, um, I decided I was gonna take the test. Um, I had a, you know, sales background anyway, and I thought it would be a good fit for me and uh, took the test and off I went. And here you are, lucky number seven years later. Here I am. Yeah, here I am six, seven years later, right? So, Brett, what you just said reminded me of something that I hear a lot, which is um, actually pretty common from what I've heard amongst real estate agents, which is like, uh, similar to your situation where they wanted to buy a home or sell a home or whatever it was, and their agent just wasn't up to par. So they were kind of like, you know, if you want something done right, do it yourself. All right. So is that kind of how you felt as well? No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah and uh, I, that's exactly what I thought. I was like, I could do this so much better than, than <laughs> this agent could. And I, and I saw the kind of car she was driving and I was like, I would like one of those now, you know, <laughs> Uh, I just, it it spurred me, it it inspired me to, uh, to get into the business. So, um, Brett, the first thing I kind of wanted to dive into with you is something that I've kind of touched on in like other episodes. Um, but I realized I've never explicitly really asked this to somebody. So we tend to talk a lot about, um, you know, misconceptions that people have about real estate as a career and, um, things that you just don't expect when you're starting as a real estate agent. And, um, Being that you've been doing it for seven years, I'm sure there's a lot of things you've learned, a lot of things you discovered. Uh, This might seem like a very general question, but perhaps you have a a more specific answer. Uh, If you had to narrow down, like what is the most difficult aspect uh, in your experience of being a real estate agent? Is it one thing or is it perhaps a combination of things? I don't think there's any one thing. Uh, and, And I learned something daily, practically. Um, but it, it's, it's learning how to deal with, with people um, because you get a little bit of everything in this business. And what was difficult was you have to play nice, you know, e- even with people that aren't particularly nice. Right. Um, you know, because you're going to you're going to run into these people somewhere later in your career, more than likely, if they stick around, whether it be agents, loan officers, title people. Um, there's so many moving parts in a real estate transaction and so many people involved. And that was one thing I wasn't entirely aware of coming into the business. Um, I figured, you know, you see what you see on TV. Oh, you know, I, I'll meet the clients. I'll show them a couple of houses. Bing, bang, boom. We are all getting paid and everybody's happy. No, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, so uh, it, there's a lot of people involved and you have to be able to get along with a lot of different personalities. And uh, so that that was kind of the, 
big adjustment for me because I was used to being uh, in my former uh, job or career. I, I was the boss. I was in charge. Do what I say. That's it. Doesn't work that way in real estate. <laughs> <laughs> the client's basically your boss, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. So that, that kind of um, makes me think of my former job, which I was working at a car dealership and I wasn't a salesperson, but I worked in the, the paperwork finance department, essentially. And so you pretty much interact with every client that comes to the door. And something that I kind of realized early on that kind of helped me um, adjust to the, the stress level of, of these things is, you know, people are making a big purchase if they're buying a car. So emotions run high. And it's pretty common for people to act out of character, I think. So I can only imagine that when you're buying a house or selling a house, it's amplified because, you know, it's a much larger purchase than even something like a car is. So I guess, you know, when you are working with clients and emotions are running high, if you tell yourself, you know, maybe this isn't how this person always is, it might be a little bit easier to deal with their objections or perhaps a certain way they're speaking to you. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, every real estate agent that's been in the business for any length of time should also have a little degree up in their office that says some sort of psychiatry degree. Because, <laughs> you know, I, you're right. Emotions run high. That's putting it mildly. Um, and uh, you, you spend some time talking people off the ledge, you know, uh, as to... Uh, they second guess themselves. Are we doing the right thing? Are, are we doing the wrong thing? Is this a good, you know, their mind runs and you spend a lot of time kind of coaching them through it all. And um, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, in one of our earlier episodes, Sherilyn said something very similar to what you said, which was, you know, every realtor can tell you they're basically a part-time psychotherapist as well. So yeah. That, that kind of, um, and you know, I definitely see that working here, but um, that was something that I guess I never thought about prior to, to working at this uh, brokerage. So it, it kind of alters your perception when you hear these things from agents, because I think on the outside, y y clients or just people who aren't involved, don't work in real estate, don't really interact with it a lot, might just think it's a pretty easy job, like you were saying earlier, where it's like you open the door, give somebody the keys, bada bing, bada boom, paycheck. There's really a lot more that goes into it. And um, it comes back to that, that adage that agents tend to have, which is like, you know, you pretty much earn every penny that you make on your closings and maybe then some. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's just, and, and you know, I'm not, I'm not saying this um, to discourage anybody from getting in the business, um, but you, you have to work. <laughs> there is there is work involved and most of it is um you know once you've mastered kind of the, the contracts and the paperwork and all of that that gets kind of um i don't want to say routine because every deal is different but that becomes almost second nature the 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 main part of your craft uh, is dealing with all of the people and how do you how do you handle difficult situations how do you handle um, lenders and and clients that aren't getting along or you know buyers and sellers that happen to meet i've had that happen and they don't like each other uh that can make your deal interesting so it, it's more of the handling of the people for me that's the the daily challenge that makes sense. Yeah. Cause I, I'd have to agree with you. I mean, obviously I'm not an agent, so I can't speak to this hundred percent, but I would imagine, like you said, the, the technical side of things, you know, working the MLS, working your, uh, your CRM, working the paperwork has got to be pretty, you push that to the back of your mind. And most of that stress probably comes from, like you said, dealing with people and, uh, whatever, uh, objections or roadblocks pop up along the way. So I have to agree with you, even just based on what I've seen. So Brett, talking about um, unique situations and uh, dealing with objections and dealing with whatever uh, the career throws at you, something that I saw from you recently, uh, just because I see a little bit of the listing side at our brokerage, you had a listing recently that was uh, 
essentially a, a luxury listing. It was a pretty high price point. It's a beautiful home. So dealing with listings at like a higher price point, I think is something that can be intimidating to some agents. And I don't know, you know, how often you work with luxury sellers or buyers or whatever the case might be, but I'm curious about your approach basically. So when you get a listing and it's, you know, such a gorgeous home, do you do things differently? And if so, what might that be? Or would you kind of just operate the same as if it were, you know, an, a very average price point? Oh, that's, that's actually a pretty easy question. Uh, no, I treat everybody the same. Okay. Uh, now, that doesn't mean everybody's circumstances are the same. Uh, but I tried my best to treat everybody the same. And uh, they either appreciate that or they don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, to be honest, um, you know, I, I don't run into it too often. But every once in a while, you know, you'll have a high price point. And, and the folks are uh, very aware of what kind of money they have and what kind of things they own. And they'll make you very aware of how important they are, um, which, you know, that's fine. That's okay. That, but that doesn't change my approach. And I'll flat out tell them. I'll say, hey, look, you know, we, we are going to treat this as a luxury listing just because of the price point. Um, I said, but I, I treat all of my clients uh, the same. You're going you're gonna to get what you get from me. I'm straightforward. I'm no BS to the point. You'll never be guessing as to where you stand or where we stand. And, uh, and they, most of them appreciate that. Yeah, I've always gotten that from you, Brett. Actually, you have a, um, a blurb on your agent page on the website, which just says, you know, I'm the no-nonsense realtor or something like that. And uh, when I see that, I'm like, yep, yeah, that perfectly encapsulates Brett because that's just how I've always felt about you. Same thing, just with you and I professionally, I'm like, I always kind of know where I'm at with Brett. So I appreciate yeah. that about you. <laughs> it just, it makes things easier, uh, you know, it, and you just don't, you don't have to guess, Yeah. Uh, you know, what, what's going on or where we're at. And uh, most clients appreciate that. Most people in general you know, not everybody. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> no, I can imagine. Um, and that kind of makes me think of, I can't remember where I heard this, but I heard an agent speak recently who said something like, just as clients can be selective with who they choose as their realtor, you also have the equal right as a realtor to choose who you work with as a client. So I'd imagine if you encountered somebody that wasn't a fan of, uh, you know, maybe not getting special treatment, I guess, you always have that option to walk away, you can say, hey, fire me or whatever the case might be. And, you know, maybe, maybe it's a loss at the end of the day, but I think it's crucial to maintaining your sanity. I wonder if you would agree. Yeah. And, and typically that's kind of hashed out in our early conversations they they decide pretty quickly you know if if i'm their guy or, or not yeah and um so so i i don't usually run into that somewhere down the line that's usually one of the first conversations we we know pretty quickly whether we're going to get along or not and, and, and I, I tell them, hey, look, you know, this is a relationship built on trust. And being that we just met, uh, we're going to have to get along and you're going to have to, you know, uh, learn to trust me. And, and so we know pretty quick how that's going to go. It's also good dating advice. Be clear about your intentions hmm. up front. <laughs> Probably so. Probably so. <laughs> Oh, man. So, Brett, um, talking about, you know, things that you do particularly well. Um, so let me start by saying we recently did uh, training at the brokerage on social media, which if you saw last week's episode, Amy and I talked about that a little bit. But um, I, I had to help basically co-host this meeting. And in doing my research for asking questions at the panel, you know, I'm looking up statistics on how agents use social media, basically, right? And I can't remember the exact statistic, but it was something along the lines of, uh, you know, 87 to 90 something percent of people begin their home search online. They're actively using social media or it's that, uh, to some degree involved in their real estate search. Yet only 50 something percent of agents actively use social media. And while it's one of those things that, yeah, you can probably be a successful agent without it, especially if you've built your sphere out and that sort of thing. Uh, 
with the way that trends, at least just from what I've seen, are going, you see a lot more people using social media, using it not only to, you know, search for things, but uh, to, to, I guess, judge would be the best word for it, who they're going to be working with, right? So in my opinion, at least, I think it's important for an agent to have at least some sort of social media. So to circle back to what I was saying, I think that's something that you particularly excel at for, for um, an agent who, you know, I know you a little bit personally, and you're not a huge fan of technology as far as I know, but you do, <laughs> you do pretty well on social media, man. You're pretty active. And I see you doing videos at, um, you know, new construction homes, and you post a lot of closing pictures with clients and that sort of thing. So I guess my question for you is, um, you know, how easy is that for you? And then how important do you think it is for agents to be uh, involved on social media, at least to some degree? It's, it's just the way the world's going. Right. Uh, I, 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 it's not that I was, oh, yay, let's do this. Uh, that was not me at all. Uh, and, and you know this from talking to me, you know, I come into the office, I'm like, hey, I, I need all my 20 something year olds to, or 30 something to, you know, please help the old man out. Um, but it, it took practice to get comfortable, uh, you know, like in front of in front of the camera, if you will, um, doing videos and, um, yeah, the, and doing, taking the pictures and all that. That's pretty simple stuff. That's just keeping me in my spheres mind. Oh, that's right. Brett's a real estate agent. Oh, there he is again. Brett's a real estate agent. Oh, that's right. He sells houses. Uh, he, he, you know, he helped you list your house. So as, as long as that's popping up, you know, once, once, twice, you know, during, during the month, they're going to see me. They're going to be reminded of that. The videos, which I should do more, of and uh, you should help me. I think <laughs> <laughs> with pleasure, with pleasure. But uh, the the ones that I do, it's just so people can see, you know, that you're a real person. It's that because uh, people don't know you, and uh, and they oh okay, so they get a sense of uh, you know what you're doing out and about in the community, whether you're whether it's new construction or or whatever it is. I I, I did a whole bunch of uh septic tank videos i remember and, those uh, you know just to say hey the, the real estate's not real glamorous when you're mm -hmm. lifting the lid off a septic tank now i'm not doing the work but i'm there yeah uh, so um but is it important yes absolutely it's just the way the world is um a lot of people's the main part of their social interaction sadly as far as i'm concerned but it, the main part of their social uh interaction is online right um you know uh my my kids the, the the idea of calling someone on the phone and talking to them is like oh my god no we're gonna text and do all this other stuff yeah. way before we think about talking to somebody i don't get it but that's the way it is and uh so is it important to answer your question absolutely gotcha so I definitely agree with you, Brett, um, specifically, you know, the closing pictures, like you were mentioning um, in the training, Amy talked a little bit about that because she does kind of similar to what you do. I think she pretty much does it at every closing uh, if the client's up for it. Now, that is a contingency, right? Does the client want to actually take the picture? What she said at this training is uh, basically she doesn't really give them an option. She's just kind of like, we're taking this picture. You're going to be happy about it. You're going to cherish this photo. Um, Something that you do, which I like for marketing purposes, but it's also just nice to see, which is, you know, you're actually in the photos with the clients. So like you were saying about keeping your name at the forefront of your sphere's mind, of your social media following's mind, you know, you're putting your face right there saying, hey, this is me and my happy clients. And yes, it is a momentous and very happy occasion, but at the same time, it works to your benefit career-wise. Um, so what I wanted to ask really is, you know, Number one, in my opinion, I think that's a pretty easy thing to start doing as far as social media goes for agents, just saying, hey, clients, happy closing day. Let's take a photo to celebrate. But number two, do you encounter objections with clients when you go to do something like that? Is Because I think some agents might get nervous about uh, you know approaching them to ask, hey, can I put a picture up on my social media? Have you ever had anybody sort of give you any pushback or has it been pretty easy? No, I, I don't. Uh, 
and and I don't really give them. I tell them, and and you know, they're, it's it's a happy day. It's a happy occasion. They've gotten through the whole month, month and a half of uh, of buying a house. They've signed the papers. They got the keys in their hand. They're generally pretty happy. I only had um, one person decline. They, they just didn't want to be, they didn't want some family members just in case to see that they had bought a house. Mm. Uh, you know, it was, it was a personal financial kind of thing. Other than that, you know, 99.9% of the people are just thrilled to death. Mm. I mean, we just bought a house. We actually did it. Put it out there. Yeah. And uh, so uh, problems, not really. Uh, most people, um, are pretty receptive to that. And, and that goes for not just closings. People are, people are hams. They're, 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 they want a mug for the camera, no matter where you're at or what you're doing, which is why I think I should probably do more videos. Um, cause people, people are like, Oh, you know, Oh, I'm going to be on the camera. Great. And, um, it, it works. Yeah, absolutely. I, while you were saying all that, I was just thinking of this meme I saw in one of those, you know, real estate meme pages, which is like a, you and your clients trying to take a nice closing picture after a nightmare deal. And it's just, like, I forget the exact image, but it's a bunch of people with like their hair all messed up and like smeared makeup and all this. And so that, that made me giggle while you're saying that, but I definitely agree with you, Brett. I think it's a pretty easy thing to start doing. I don't see why you would have objections for clients. So advice to agents out there who want to use social media more. Closing picture is the easy way to get started. And, and you know, if you if you're my biggest advice for any of that is get over yourself. <laughs> it really, it, because uh, you know, and it's it took me a while, you know, seeing pictures of myself or being on camera. I'm like, oh, you know, this isn't right. Oh, I do. I look fat. I look skinny. Whatever. Nobody cares. Yeah. They know what you look like. Nobody gives a crap. What you know? Put it out there. Exactly. And you know, not to sound like a broken record, but again, in this training, Amy said something along the lines of what you're saying, which is like, um, if you, if there are people out there who are seeing, you know, the pictures or the videos or whatever that you put up, and they think, oh, I don't like the way she speaks, or I don't like the way she looks, or whatever. That's not somebody you want to work with anyway, right? There you go. Boom. There you go. You just weeded out the people that don't like your face. Exactly. Right. <laughs> also great dating advice. Put yourself out there. <laughs> and we should start a dating advice podcast, Brett. I don't know how well it would do, but hey. <laughs> From a guy's point of view, it's not a bad idea. There you go. Keep your eye out, people. So um, uh, to sort of stay on this topic of social media and closing pictures, from you specifically, Brett, um, I see a lot of the ones that you do are at, uh, number one, I see DR Horton, like you always have that backdrop. We just closed on our new DR Horton home or whatever. And then uh, in the same vein, I've seen you take videos that, you know, new homes for your clients that are being built, that sort of thing. So just from my perception, it seems like you deal a lot with new construction homes. Is that accurate? Eh, I wouldn't say a lot. And in, in years past, yes. Because you know what, if you're going to pay practically the same price, and it depends on the client as well. Um, but during the pandemic, uh, new construction became very difficult. <laughs> there was a yeah. run on new construction and uh, there were bidding wars for lots and all kind of crazy stuff. I only did a few actually last year, and uh, and I've got a couple. I've got one or two pending for this upcoming year. We'll see how it goes. You know, uh, I, I love new construction. That it's um, you know the whole process is uh, pretty streamlined, and and the folks are getting a brand new home, so we're not going through inspections and and I mean there's inspections, but not with uh like you have with a a used house if you right. will um but uh i wouldn't say that it's a, a huge part of of what i do it's just another tool it's another option that we have absolutely i think um you know because once again we had a separate training on new home construction but i think it's one of those things that can be intimidating to just an agent who hasn't dealt with it before 
Um, from what I've heard, you know, if you have a good relationship with the builder, if you kind of know your stuff, if you're just doing the same thing as you would always do, which is advocating for your client, it can be a pretty smooth process. So my question to you would be just that, I mean, it, would you say it's comparatively speaking easier than just a traditional, you know, real estate transaction, or is it to some degree more difficult? No, it is not more difficult. Um, <laughs> It was explained to me uh, in the beginning, you know, basically just just go, just go, 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 you know, meet some of these builders, talk to them and, and, and get familiar with the communities. And so that's what I did. I went and I said, hey, you know, what, what have you got? You know, and you'll usually find an agent that'll take a minute that'll talk to you. And some are better than others. But the process of taking your clients to a new construction place to look at model homes there's nothing to it. Yeah. You take them there and, and you shut up because <laughs> their agent is going to be there and, and they're going to, they're the ones. So if you take them to the, you know, Pulte or DR Horton or wherever that agent supposedly not always, but suppose it knows everything there is to know about the model, about the community, about the taxes and everything else. So you basically kind of just, sit back and let them do their job right and uh, it couldn't be any easier there's nothing to be intimidated about um you know later on after you do a few of those you just you naturally learn things that that you didn't know prior makes sense it's, uh, it comes back to that thing that i hear which is you know as a real estate agent you're less of a salesperson at times and more of just an advocate for your clients, which I think that's a perfect example of because you're basically just there to represent them, make sure their best interests are getting met. And um, so I think that perfectly speaks to the lack of um, being a salesperson in some scenarios as a realtor. I'm sure there are many scenarios where you do have to be a salesperson, but it's definitely well, a hybrid. <laughs> to, to be honest, I, I tell all of my clients, whether it's new construction, existing homes, I tell them right off the get-go, I am not going to sell you anything. And they all look at me like, what do you mean? You know, I, I, I said, that, that's not my job. My job is to help you find what you want. We're going to find what you want in, in the time frame, hopefully, that you want with, with the least amount of hassles and hiccups during the process. And the, the other part of my job is uh, that I also tell them is to make sure to the best of my ability that nothing, nothing bad happens to you. Because you know what? Th there are some things that go sideways during a real estate transaction at times. And my job is to handle all of that. So, um, and people appreciate that. I always, I always tell them, I say, look, I'm not gonna take you out of the house and say, ooh, look at this. It has this, this, and this. Isn't this great? You should buy this. I'm not going to do that. It's going to be, do you like it? Does it work for you? The, uh, tell, me, tell me what you think. And then if it's not right, we move on. Right. So your intentions are pure, Brett. I admire that about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, again, it's to cut out the, the BS, if you will. Yeah. yeah. I, I, nobody needs that. Do you like it? No. Let's Wonderful. move on. <laughs> Saves everybody time, I'm sure, as well. <laughs> so, um, Brett, before I let you go, I just had a couple of uh, pretty easy questions, ones that we ask pretty much on every podcast that more so have to do with you than the other stuff that we're talking about. So the first one, and you kind of maybe answered this already, um, but perhaps you'll have a different answer. So uh, somebody spoke to me recently and said, Hey, Paul, on the podcast, you should ask your guests, you know, what is like their uh, their key ingredient, their secret sauce or whatever. And I realize agents aren't always willing to give that away. So let me ask a more uh, specific question, which is in your career, what would you say is your greatest strength? Would it be that you are a, a very no nonsense approach type of guy or is there something else perhaps? My greatest strength probably has come with it. I, it's come with age. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it because 
you know, when I when I was much younger, um, as far as I was concerned, um, you know, I pretty much knew what I was doing. Don't try to tell me what to do because I know what I'm doing. And uh, I have learned the hard way over years. I'm not the end all beat all. And, and I tell and I tell clients that from the beginning, uh, if I don't know, I will flat out tell you, if you ask me a question and I don't know, I'll flat out tell you, I have no idea. But you know what? I've got a brokerage with like 70 something odd agents. I've got brokers. I've got people that have been in the business longer than I have. I've got a whole resource of folks that I can go to and I will find the answer for you. And try, trying my best to remain humble and, and keep grounded. And uh, that's oddly enough turned into sort of a, a, a strength. People appreciate that. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, um, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So I think being honest with people is, I mean, they say honesty is the best policy. I think you're absolutely right. Well, uh, there's, this may come as a shock to you. There's a lot of ego in real estate. <laughs> There's a lot of big heads that can't get through the door. Yeah, I know. You're shocked to hear that. Uh, <laughs> so I try my best not to be that guy. <laughs> Makes sense, Brett. Well, I, I've never gotten that perception of you. So you're doing pretty well, man. <laughs> so you know, my head's getting big. Getting what's that? <laughs> oh, your head's getting big. <laughs> Okay. No, let me knock you down a peg. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so my second to last question here, Brett, uh, is kind of a fun one. If you had to go back, you know, seven years ago, you said you have a background in sales and that sort of thing. Um, but if you had to choose a different career path than real estate, is there anything else that you might've seen yourself doing? You know, I, I had some, I'm from Pittsburgh originally. There's not much to do in the winter time. And, uh, so I, I used to bowl. And I had dreams of being a professional bowler. Uh, so if I could pick anything on the planet, I would be a professional bowler. Oh, that's awesome, man. You like the Big Lebowski, the movie? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I think of when everybody, anyone talks about bowling. I just, I yeah. just imagine Steve Buscemi or, or uh, John I mean, there's Goodman. a lot of other things that I would like to do. And, and, and or, or, you know, if I was really going to get stupid, you know, I'd be the lead guitarist for some heavy metal hey. band. But uh you know that would probably lead to a horrible downfall <laughs> and demise for my me personally hey man i've seen the yearbook photos you had the you had the look <laughs> <laughs> other than those two things i always wanted even even from my early 20s i i bought i actually bought my first home when i was 21 and uh which was extremely unheard of back in 1986 i was very young and uh, my my dream and goal was to be this huge real estate investor and um i got sidetracked though um and moved to florida and got into the medical field and uh, did that for quite a while and um so my investing dream sort of faded off uh, but it, real estate's always been in the plan and um so you know and here i am and here you are <laughs> yeah well i can see you doing all those things brett hey man it's never too late to start shredding you know <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that i was looking at guitars online i'm thinking i should just do it i should just buy one do it <laughs> i'll be i'll be the oldest heavy metal lead guitarist in history <laughs> Some, somebody will die from like motley crew and they'll call me right <laughs> just don't tell your wife that i egged you on all right if you buy it <laughs> all right man so very last question i have this is how we end pretty much every episode so if you had to give a word of advice to new agents or agents who might be struggling if you had one piece of advice that you can give them what would it be don't quit boom don't be don't be a sissy uh Real estate is not for sissies. There you and, go. You know, uh, if you quit, well, then it's over. You quit. The first year or two is not going to be pie in the sky. You know, for most people, it, it's it's a learning curve, and it and it takes a minute before you start getting consistent money coming in. Uh, don't don't go anywhere. That's pretty much it. I like it, short and sweet, to the point. 
And um, let me put a disclaimer before I say this, that this is not my quote, but I will say it anyway. Um, watching real estate videos, I came across this statistic, which is uh, something like 87% of realtors quit or fail or whatever it might be within the first, I think, four years of their career, something like that. So this person was basically saying, and I think it was Tom Ferry, I'm not sure, but he said basically just be part of the 13% that will separate you from your competitors. I think that's kind of in line with what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, was sh I was shocked. I was shocked and also not shocked because I knew I, the only little advantage I had coming into this is I knew it's, it's a commission-based business and it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. I knew that coming in. A lot of people don't. They see what they see on TV. They think it's going to be easy and they find out it's actual work. And oh, if I'm going to work my tail off, I prefer the guaranteed paycheck. And they go back to their, you know, $35,000, $40,000 a year job, safe, easy. And uh, I get it. It's not for everybody. Um, but if you have higher aspirations and, um, you know, want to be able to take care of your family in a way that you kind of only dreamed of, um, stick it out. It'll get better. <laughs> It'll get better folks. You heard it here first, Brett Watkins. <laughs> well, Brett, my man, that was all I had for you today. Again, I really appreciate you making the time to sit down with me. Thanks, Paul. And no technical glitches this time, right? Let's cross our fingers and pray to the techno gods. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. No problem. I'll catch you around. All right. Have a good one. You too, man. All right. That was Brett Watkins. Uh, like I said up top, one of my favorite agents at the brokerage. And um, everything he said is, is pretty true to who he actually is as a person. Uh, he's one of those that doesn't... Um, you know, put on a facade or anything like that. Brett's pretty straight to the point, no nonsense, as he said. So thank you, Brett, for sitting down with me today. Uh, housekeeping stuff. This is episode 16. Uh, new things. Let's see. Video podcasts are up on Spotify. I think I mentioned that earlier. But if you uh, don't prefer YouTube and you're maybe a big fan of Spotify, you like seeing the Spotify wrapped and that sort of thing, it's a great place to watch the podcast because the videos are up there now. Um, again, maybe I said this last week, but we are live on Apple Podcasts now, so you can listen there. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, do me a favor. Leave us a five-star review. Helps us out. Um, we are actually, uh, I don't know if I should say this maybe yet, but Anchor is a platform that we use to um, synchronize this podcast to a couple different streaming platforms. And there is a possibility that we might be able to do something mildly exciting with them soon. So... All I need from you guys is just keep listening, sharing, watching, subscribing, blah, 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 the usual stuff. Um, until then, you can find us on social media at The Real Estate Playbook, Facebook, Instagram, etc. Um, and I think that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions for me, if you'd like to be on the show, um, you can go to therealestateplaybook.com, fill out the form there. And um, that's pretty much it. Oh, I forgot to ask Brett while we were recording to uh, you know plug his information, but... Uh, if you're watching right now, I'll put it up on the screen. If you're listening, I'll put it down in the description box if you want to reach out to Brett. Highly recommend. 10 out of 10 guy. And um, until then, we will see you guys next week. And take it easy. Mm -hmm.